two Crystal Palace and the three A's national championships and the large field of 28 men, the traditional large field for the 10,000 meters has gathered at the start. And certainly this is an event which has brought about some of the most historic races in the history of these championships, the oldest national championships in the sport. And two names in recent years dominate David Bedford and Brendan Foster. Bedford in particular, the man who uh, has often been attributed with bringing the crowds back to Crystal Palace in the 70s when he won five successive three A's titles over this distance. And of course in 1973 here he set a new world record. It used to be held then on the Friday night in all manner of varying weather conditions. Well today it's rather warmer perhaps than many of these 10,000 meters men would have wished. Good quality field. So Steve Jones, who should have been the defending champion, has opted to go tomorrow in the 5,000 meters instead. Steve Jones, who had a tremendous battle in last year's race with Mick McLeod. It was important then for Jones because it was a race which meant he had to try and uh, convince the selectors that he should go to the Olympic Games, which subsequently, of course, he did. So, Steve Jones not defending his title. He goes in the 5,000 metres tomorrow. But plenty of interesting names in this big field who go off on their 25 laps. Some of the names to look out for. John Woods, David Murphy, Carl Harrison, Steve Anders, Steve Empson. All names that we saw a lot of in the Gamers Old English Cider Series, the road race series held on Channel 4 earlier this summer. And there indeed, number 13, right in the centre, Carl Harrison of Stretford Harriers in the maroon shorts is one of the men who figured prominently in that series. Carl Harrison, who was second in the United Kingdom Championships over this distance, leads them through then on this first lap. An opportunity, just to look back briefly, because we saw John Herbert in the triple jump just before that men's 100 meters final and Peter Matthews I know that uh, all kinds of exciting things are going on behind John Herbert now in that competition yes it's a fascinating competition John Herbert's jump was 15 meters 25 so he remains the leader with his first round effort of 16 meters 80 but behind him two men have jumped 1677 that's just about an inch behind Joseph Taiwo of Nigeria has jumped it twice so he lies second 1677 and Willie Banks has gradually improved each round and he's also done 1677 then we've got Valcindes of Cuba 16 meters 70 and Eric McCaller of Birchfield Harriers lies fifth 1644 they're just having a little pause at the moment in the competition having completed three rounds with another three rounds for the leading eight jumpers and it's certainly going to prove a fascinating competition with several men still very much in contention and three of the Japanese guests who are late entrance into this race filling the first three places. Kudo, number 17. Just behind him, number 34, is Urakwa. And number 16 is Kato. Well, we saw them in action as a team against Great Britain and East Germany at Birmingham last week. And they're running as a team at the moment in the early stages of this 10,000 metres. At the end of two laps, the time 2.16 or so, and in fact that was a rather quicker lap, the first lap 69 seconds, the second 67, so the Japanese are running fairly purposefully. They're always a, a charming little band of Japanese who find their way to Europe every summer, um, and they run six or seven of them in 5,000 metres and 10,000 metres in places like Oslo and Stockholm and Helsinki, but they've yet to produce on the track the kind of quality they show in marathon running where several of them have been at the very top of the world. Craig Duhaim is number six there, the Canadian who won a bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games over the uh, 3,000 meters steeplechase and he is in fifth place at the moment. The Japanese trio still in the lead. Carl Harrison on the inside in the maroon shorts and the white top and number six in the white top and the dark colored shorts is Greg Duhaim. crowd trying to recognize their own favorites as they move back through this traditionally big field and certainly Carl Harrison will be one of those who will be hoping to transfer his road racing form of earlier in the year to the track 
yet to win a really big title on the track, but always, like so many of these distance runners, a tremendously consistent and successful road runner and cross country man. Carl Harrison in fourth place at the moment behind Duhayne with Kudo, Kato, and Urukwa of Japan still holding the first three places. The pace, as you can you can tell, is fairly modest. The sort of benchmark of international 10,000 meters is around final time under 28 minutes. And of course, the world record is, is much nearer to 27 minutes, 27.13. And at the pace they're running at the moment, it's about 28.20 pace and looking to get slower. But I can't see in this field anybody who's really a 27.30 type runner. So although we won't get a fast time, we're going to get rather an exciting race. It's very balanced and any one of 10 or maybe a dozen people in this field could actually win it. And one of them is going to have to commit themselves somewhere in the race to try and lift the pace or impose some kind of tactics. 4.31 after four laps. And the pace has settled down. They may just be happy to leave the Japanese out front, of course, doing a lot of the work, at least for the first uh, 13 or 14 laps. But then it might be interesting to see whether someone like Carl Harrison feels that he ought to lead a breakaway. So behind that Japanese trio, it's still Carl Harrison just uh, hidden from view on the inside. Number six is Duhayne of Canada. And number three is Steve Anders, who was third in the United Kingdom Championships, the St. Helens runner. Coming up to 20 laps to go. And of course, as far as Harrison is concerned, he'd be quite happy to see this trio of Japanese doing the early work. Also up there in that leading group, number 22, David Murphy. Look out for him. A very versatile performer over a range of distances. Liverpool Harrier, better known as a marathon runner, and second in the famous New York Marathon back in 1984. The time at two kilometers just outside five minutes 40, so the pace is getting even slower uh, and of course once you're in that pack you sit in there thinking about your own stride your own rhythm just trying to relax and not really looking very far ahead your eyes well below the horizon just looking at the man in front of you concentrating perhaps on his back just thinking about breathing but also faintly conscious of who's coming up on your shoulder like number 13 there Harrison aware of number six Duhame and then being careful not to get spiked, not to trip. And if you look back toward the back of the field with a man in the yellow vest just on the edge of the picture, you can see that around there there's a little cluster of runners and they must all be worried about jostling and touching and getting knocked onto the inside of the track. It's, it, it's a kind of lazy running, Alan, just to settle into that pack, but look at them there in the middle. They're almost falling over each other. Really, Carl Harrison, I think, ought to think about moving up now. They've got 19 laps to go the, the race is now settled but he could start to take them away number 21 Colin Moore of Bingley just moving through two but Carl Harrison the best placed of the domestic runners and they're just to indicate what Adrian was saying they're so closely bunched the pace is so uh, relatively slow that we had one runner tripping over another then but no fallers so as they move off into uh, the back straight once again with 18 and a half laps remaining in this 10,000 meters final. An opportunity for us to look back at uh, the exciting goings on in the triple jump with Willie Banks. In the 100 meters, Ernest Obeng given the victory in 10.44, just one hundredth of a second ahead of Darwin Cook. Now Mike McFarlane finished in third place just ahead of Emo and, Mc and Asquith, but he was disqualified for having broken out of his lane. So disappointment for him, although certainly he would have been pleased to have actually shaded Lincoln Asquith in the race itself. In time, back in the 10,000 metres, I'm sure the finish with 17 laps to go will be not quite as closely contested as that 100 metres with two hundredths of a second separating the first three, literally the blinking of an eyelid. And it's still Carl Harrison behind the Japanese guest runner and also wearing uh, number 20 Gates and Empson also in that uh, leading group of, well, it's hardly separated itself from the rest of the field. Carl Harrison, number 13, and on the inside, number 17, Kudo of Japan. <laughs> it has been a race over the years, as we were saying, which has really lifted 
the crowd. And I suppose 12 years ago to this very day, it was David Bedford's magnificent race, which is best remembered. He led all the way. He won 27 minutes, 30.8 second, seconds, bettering the previous world record by over seven seconds. And the next day, would you believe, David Bedford went out and ran in the 5,000 meters, finishing in sixth place. Third place now behind Harris, Tony Milofsarov, the Tipton Harrier, has moved up. And meantime, in the triple jump, Willie Banks is a fine effort that was by John Herbert. That's the best jump by a British athlete this year, 16 meters 85. And we're now back with the 10,000 meters. And another of the Japanese contingent, Nakayama, tried to uh, spread the field a little. Number 24, nearest to the camera. On the inside is Kudo, his fellow countryman. And still those two sharing the leadership. And it was a significant lap with 12 to go because it has spread the field a little, as you can see. Nothing like as closely punched. Carl Harrison still very much in touch with them. And I wonder, Peter, whether the uh, pace did increase significantly on that lap. No, not much. It's a, it's a fairly steady pace. Well, it's very hot weather for running 10,000 metres. They went through the halfway stage, the 5,000 metres, in round about 14.20. So that's a 28.40 pace altogether. And uh, is nowhere near the sort of world-class times that we have seen in this championships, like when Dave Bedford ran his world record, or indeed Brendan Foster broke that time to set a British record back in the 70s. Tony Milovsarov in the green and white hoops, sandwiched between Nakayama and Kudo, the two Japanese runners, with Carl Harrison moving up to them in the yellow top and the dark shorts there. Number 22 is David Murphy. And still no significant, really, uh, no significant break being made because Nakayama's attempt to try and spread the field has come to nothing, and most of them are back again with that leading bunch. I think, Alan, they're all afraid, afraid of the heat. Uh, they don't really want to commit themselves. It, it, it's pretty warm out there because it's been such a lovely day that the heat has baked into the track and it's very warm on the soles of your feet and there's quite a few toward the back of the field showing really quite acute signs of exhaustion. I think what we're seeing boiling up really is, is an attempt by this whole group to get through the next seven or eight laps and then start to quicken the pace as they still feel fresh and know there are only three laps to go. And then, of course, a really glorious last lap where everybody really tries very hard indeed. Eleven men now in this breakaway group, led by Carl Harrison, with Nakayama and Kudo still alongside him. Number 28, Brian Sheriff, Zimbabwe athlete, is also in that group. Milofsarov, Woods, and still the leadership changing hands almost with every lap. The Japanese haven't done their work. It's now Carl Harrison's turn to go back in front once again. Coming up now to 10 laps to go in this 10,000 meters final. Coming up to five laps to go in the 10,000 metres, and with seven laps to go, the figure in the yellow vest of John Woods threw in uh, a significant lap, and that has helped to split the field. And there's now a group of six or seven who've broken away from the rest, including two Japanese runners, Nakayama and Kudo, but from Great Britain, Carl Thackeray, Woods himself, Carl Harrison, Ryan of the United States, Sheriff of Zimbabwe, and Abby also of Japan and about that double arm shift that, that changes his, his run up but in fact the 10,000 is beginning to boil up now we'll come back to the triple jump in a minute Alan yes certainly a competition we're keeping a very close eye on as Carl Thackeray with now what three and a half laps remaining takes up the lead in the 10,000 meters the almost diminutive figure behind him is Sheriff of Zimbabwe there he is number 28 Little known about him a late entrant into the race Number 24, Nakayama of Japan in third place. Then Carl Harrison has moved through to fourth. Woods is fifth. Kevin Ryan of the United States in sixth place. And just uh, bringing up the rear of that group is Kudo, the other Japanese runner. And they've certainly been very prominent in this race. Carl Thackeray in the red top and the black, black shorts running his first major race over this distance. 
plenty of experience as a 5,000 metre man. Finished fifth in the United Kingdom Championships. So, one would expect the Hallam Shaman, Seb Kozo, of course, before he joined Haringey, to have some finishing speed left. But with Carl Harrison and Woods also in that group, Adrian, it could be an interesting finish. Yes, I think Thacker is running his really his first big 10,000. Shouldn't really be there in the lead if, if he had any experience because he's just tiring himself out. And in fact, Carl Harrison, although he's led three or four laps intermittently, hasn't really had to do too much of the work. And right at the back there, John Woods, who might have been a real threat, who led a breakaway group with seven to go. That, that effort seems to have tied him out. It must be very hot out there. I mean, we're in a re reasonably cool uh, room here talking about the race, but I think out there they must be really feeling it. Nobody seems to be running with any kind of lift or bounce off the track. In fact, Kevin Ryan, who's in fifth place, if he can hold on to that leading group and doesn't let them get too far away, might just pack the best finish of all of them. I suppose the Japanese something of an unknown factor here. The, the pace is very slow, but this last two laps they're coming up to, 800 metres, I think the pace will begin to develop and wind up faster and faster and faster. Yes, certainly to this stage, not one of the classic 3A's 10,000 metres races, but I'm sure that there could be an exciting finale in prospect for all that, as the leading group of half a dozen are about to lap one of the backmarkers in the race. Thackeray leads then, the red top, Sheriff just behind him, the dark figure in the uh, white, predominantly white vest, Carl Harrison just moving through alongside Sheriff, and the white top and maroon shorts. Nakayama, all in white, is the Japanese runner, and Kudo, the other Japanese, as they fall into the back of that group. And the tall figure of Kevin Ryan of the United States, who you may have seen in action in Belfast recently, facing Steve Ovet in a 3,000 meters race. He's now moved through to four. So it's Thackeray and Harrison, as far as the home challenge is concerned, and the Zimbabwean Sheriff Ryan of the United States leading the overseas challenge as they approach the bell with Thackeray on the inside and Harris nearest to the camera in the white top. And the time at the bell, 27 minutes, 52 seconds. And uh, none of these runners have ever placed in the first three in the three A's championships before. So they're certainly going to write themselves into their own record books. So 28 years old, Carl Harrison, a consistent man, but never really able to clinch a major title finds himself trying to struggle to hold on to the man on the inside Thackeray and then as you could see just didn't seem to have any response when number 37 Kevin Ryan came by him to take over the lead so it's the United States of America in the shape of Kevin Ryan leading in this the world's oldest championships and one of the most highly prized titles of all 10,000 meters champion can Harrison as he grits his teeth and comes into the home straight with the support of the home crowd pick off the American Ryan in front of him Ryan looks strong and Harrison has run really wide to try and attack him but it's to no avail as Ryan comes home to win the 1985 UK a three, a three A's 10,000 meters championship title with Harrison second and Thackeray third Sheriff fourth Kudo was fifth, Nakayama sixth. The winner's time certainly won't go down in the annals of uh, the best times in the history of these championships. But nonetheless, it was a fine finish by Ryan and Carl Harrison. Well, the major title still seems to escape him. And really, as Adrian has been saying, the heat of the occasion has obviously taken its toll. Kevin Ryan will be rather more used to running in hot weather than uh, Carl Harrison. Stretford isn't a place where you find 80 degree temperatures too often, but Harrison from the United, uh, Ryan rather from the United States, looking more comfortable than the man he beat into second place, who takes a well-earned rest and a well-earned drink. So, two track finals that we've seen today, the 100 meters and the 10,000 meters.